today's throwback, we are having a look at the McFarlane Toys Movie Maniacs Series 4 Candyman. From Spot's collection of horror figures, this was a figure I definitely wanted to go back and have a look at again. If you ask me, of the whole McFarlane line Movie Maniacs uh, releases, I think Candyman, to be honest, is one of those figures that still stands up well to this day. Let's get a better look at the figure, but first things first, the other thing that would have come with not only Candyman, but the other Movie Maniacs figures, is this really cool display stand. Sadly, though, it doesn't stand... Oh, look at that. Now that I'm shooting the review, sure enough, it does stand. I guess that's on a good that's a good plus. But all the Movie Maniacs, to some way or another, came with a display stand, some a little bit more impressive than others. It seemed kind of as the series progressed, these display stands got less and less and less, which at one point, I think they were fully enclosed. And then they, as again, as the series progressed, they got less and less until finally, it was really only the bottom that held the posters here. And uh, I guess as it stands for posters, this one has not held up very well in my storage because unfortunately being cardboard, yeah, it got crushed. Eh, I'm not going to necessarily display him with it. I mean, it's cool that he comes with it, but I may not necessarily display Candyman with this anyways. It's just a shame that this got, like, this got really crushed, as you can see there. The poster itself features Candyman 3 Day of the Dead, um, although, really, this Candyman could fit anywhere in the three Candyman movies. I almost even look at it more as Candyman from Farewell to the Flesh, which would have been the second one, and my personal favorite. But for some reason, they packaged it with the Candyman 3 poster. So, there you go. But as it goes for display stands, it's pretty cool. On the back, really nothing other than some globs of very noticeable glue keeping the poster in place. But it's a pretty neat looking display stand. It's not something that companies venture into doing anymore. And uh, McFarlane Toys being one of the premier figures, uh, figure makers, they were one of the first to cre create all these really cool horror figures. So, pretty cool. We'll move that to the side, because I know I guarantee it's going to fall over anyways. Speaking of not falling over, I'm surprised actually Candyman has stood up. I was actually having a tough time getting him to properly stand. The figure, though, is very, very cool, and still one of my personal favorites in my collection. It also, well, it also works out that this is the only Candyman figure that we've ever gotten. We might have also got little smaller versions of Candyman, too, but other than that, as it goes for a six-inch figure, I think this is the only release we've ever gotten from Candyman. And if I could tip my virtual hat to McFarlane Toys, credit to them for giving us I wouldn't say necessarily obscure figures. Candyman is, at the time that he was coming out, I think a lot of people still were pretty familiar with Candyman. I think since then, uh, maybe Tony Todd would probably wish that there was more of these, but they haven't done a lot of Candyman sequels other than, th I think it was only the three Candyman movies. Maybe we will eventually get a Candyman reboot. That would be kind of cool. I don't know who they would pick for Candyman. You know what? Let me know down below who you would pick for a new Candyman. I would say Indris Alba, but I'm thinking he might be a little too above doing a Candyman movie, but that'd be kind of cool. Uh, as for its face, or as for his face, one of the reasons, again, why I think this figure still stands up well to this day is that is an uncanny likeness to Tony Todd. Uh, Candyman is, for anybody who does not remember Candyman, check it out. Watch the movie. It's a good movie. The first one is a little slow. The second one's still my personal favorite. I wasn't crazy about the third one, but Candyman still is a very notable horror icon. Maybe not remembered as much nowadays, but back in the day, Candyman was it. Anyways, though, the story with Candyman is that he was a slave. He fell in love with, I believe, the place where he was working. He fell in love with the owner's daughter. Uh, they found him. They found out that he was with her. And they basically dragged him out. And uh, they cut off his hand. <laughs> they cut off his, his hand here. And they doused him with honey. And uh, then the bees came and basically just stunned him to death. While a little boy was coining the term Candyman. And he kept calling him Candyman. And that's pretty much the story of Candyman. 
You look in the mirror, you say Candyman five times, bada bing, bada boom. I think it was five times, maybe it was only three times. But uh, Candyman would appear. And that's pretty much Candyman. That's in a nutshell, that is Candyman. So the figure itself is pretty cool. He's got a full coat jacket. The most noticeable feature on Candyman is his hook, which is very bloodied. Although I think in the movie it's got more nails and stuff kind of sticking through it. This one does not really have that, but you get the, you get the gist of it. Uh, one good thing about the Candyman figure is that you can open up his jacket. And inside, you've got Candyman's uh, organs, his rib cage and organs exposed. And you may not be able to tell what that is, but those are all bees. Basically, he could just he could just summon all these bees. He could just open up his jacket and be central. Miss Bee Having? Well, you'd have bees to contend with. So it's a pretty neat effect that they could have sculpted that in and still concealed it with this rubber jacket. It's a very nice, uh, effective look, if you ask me. When it comes to his posability, well, this is where he maybe doesn't stand the test of time. McFarlane toys, movie maniac figures do not stand well maybe to what we are getting nowadays from NECA in the way of posability. In fact, when it comes to Candyman, the only posability that he has is a little bit in the head. He's got articulation in the shoulder. He can swivel at the, I was going to say wrist, it's more a claw. The other arm rotates all the way around. He has a swivel point right at the other cuff of the, the sleeve. And then when you open up his legs, or open up his jacket, he does have mild articulation in the waist and mild articulation in the feet. That's it though. But still, if you're gonna be displaying him, you may not necessarily wanna display him in super articulated poses. I think for what he's doing, he's doing a pretty good job. Yes, indeed, spot of all the horror figures that uh, I have had in my collection, I've done videos for, Definitely want to go back and revisit The Candyman. We may never, sadly, ever get another Candyman movie. We may never get another Candyman action figure. But as it goes right now, this is the goodest, the goodest, the goodest. This is the best we're going to get. And I really like this figure. Just as a little side note, I think this figure still holds up to this day. Today's throwback, we were having a look at the McFarlane Toys Movie Maniacs Series 4 Candyman. Technically from Candyman 3, but if you ask me, Candyman 2 is the better movie. Stay tuned guys, Spot's going to have more throwbacks heading your way. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.